Hello everyone, this is Nokwe from Birds of Play, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the origin and the history of the alphabet language from Final Fantasy X. Getting information from the game itself, as well as its sequel, the Japanese Final Fantasy X Ultimania Omega, and last, but certainly not least, the novella Final Fantasy X 2.5 A no Daisho, otherwise known as The Price of Eternity, that was written by scenario writer Kazushige Nojima. This also means that I will be delving into the history of the Albert race, which is fascinating in and of itself, so if you're not familiar with it already, well, now's your chance. If you end up liking the video, or feeling sorry for me as a person for wasting my life talking about things that some might say don't matter, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stick around to either watch it become a great success or a spectacular failure. Either way, you win. But without further ado, let's get talking about language. The first thing to note is that the Albert language isn't a language per se, at least not in strict linguistic terms, but rather a sort of cipher language that needs a key to be properly decoded, each letter being made to correspond to a different one. Playing Final Fantasy X and X-2, the player gets a chance to collect so-called Albert primers, thereby gradually mastering the language by revealing parts of the code in small segments, allowing the player to see what the Albert are actually saying. As the name suggests, the Albert language is primarily spoken by the Albert, a race of people that have green eyes with spiral-shaped pupils and blonde hair. Well, at least those of them that have hair. This makes the Albert seemingly the only race in Spira that has a language of its own. This fact reflects a long history of marginalization, the Albert having been ostracized as heretics by the Church of Yavin, even though they can seemingly still take part in church-sanctioned blitzball tournaments. In Final Fantasy X, Riku comments on this long history in a conversation with Waka and the others. Anyway, I will take you there if you promise that you won't tell anyone about it. Especially not Yevonites, okay? You know they don't like us all bad. Who knows what they'll do if they knew? Give me a break. What are you accusing Yevon of this time? Yevon did something really bad to us before. Well, you all bad must have deserved it. Ah! So if Riku is to be believed, the Yevonites have in the past mistreated the Albert in some way, although the game doesn't explicitly state what terrible thing they did. The novel Final Fantasy X 2.5, Eien no Daisho, however, recounts the history of the Albert race in far greater detail, noting how after the Church of Yevon had been established, the Albert were blamed for the emergence of sin and executed in numbers, thereby casting them out of society. More importantly, however, at least for our purposes, as we search for the origin and the history of the Albert language, the novella also goes to show how the oppression of the Albert effectively predates Yevonism. According to the novella, the Albert originally went by a different name. Instead of the term Albert, they were known as battles, and they were practically treated as slaves by those in power due to the fact that they didn't display a predisposition to magic. In those times, Spira was governed by those endowed with supernatural abilities, since magic was required to produce even something as simple as a flame. In addition to this, the ancient world believed in its own set of deities, their worship being intertwined with the practice of ancient summoning rituals. This meant that the battle's inability to use magic might have been seen as a sign of them being cut off from this divine realm, further pushing them to the fringes of society. But even though they couldn't wield magic, the battles excelled at operating machina, or machines, practically making them indispensable to a civilization that became increasingly dependent on machinery. The part of the story that sees the emancipation of the battles takes place more than a thousand years ago, at the cusp of the Machina War and the coming of Sin, wherein a mechanic called Alp had been tasked with creating an army of mechanical battles. In those times, important figures were known to take the names of certain gods, and Alp was the name of the god of workers. It is unclear what this means about Alp himself as a person, aside from the fact that he must have also had another name. Whether Alp was a battle himself, however, seems at least somewhat unlikely, since he is seemingly not shown the same disdain as the other battles in the novella, and also because it might be improbable that a battle would be permitted to take on the name of a god in the first place, although the title of the god of workers might just as well be reserved for the battles. Regardless of Alp's ancestry, he ended up going back on his word by not actually producing mechanical battles, and instead gathering members of the battle community as stand-ins for the mechanical army. Later, the battles escaped and became known as Alb's Battles. After the Machina War, the term Albert then emerges as a derogatory term, marking both Alb and the battles themselves by mashing the two names together. It's interesting to note how this also serves not only as a denouncement of the old gods, but also as a means of vilifying them 
similar to what happened with Poseidon or Neptune after the rise of Christianity when his signature trident was handed off to Satan, effectively turning a positive religious symbol into a negative one. In order to further segregate the Albert and bar them from socializing with the rest of the population, magic was then used to affix a mark onto their bodies, the mark being the distinct spiral-shaped pupil, explaining why many Alberts choose to cover their eyes with goggles. Although the significance of this mark seems to have been mostly lost to history, since according to the Final Fantasy X Ultimania Omega, even a devout follower of Yevon such as Waka is not familiar with this characteristic of the Albert, which perhaps isn't surprising considering that his prejudices mainly stem from not knowing enough about them. In practice, this allows Riku to join the party without any protest from Waka. In the grander scheme of things, however, there was also a secondary punishment meted out, namely that the Albert would only be permitted to speak their own separate language. One might think that it was at this point that the Albert language came into being. That is, however, not the case, since in the novella we are treated to another scene wherein Ifanel, another being that had taken on the name of a god like Alp, is seen conversing with a battle in its own language, an act that is met with much disdain by one of his compatriots, showing how deep-seated the contempt for the Albert has been since even before Spira's surviving history. But this also means that the Albert language existed before the law about being forced to use it, and wasn't some sort of magical construct akin to changing the shape of their pupils. Much like the mark in their eyes, however, this law has fallen into relative obscurity since many Albert such as Rin, who operates a chain of rest stops in plain sight, are fluent in the common tongue of Spira. And that's as far as the lore itself will take us about the origin and the history of the Albert language. But wait, there's more, since we can still make up a compelling theory about the actual origin of the language based on the established and the extended lore of Final Fantasy X. The first thing we must do, however, is decide what the Albert language actually is. In the beginning, I described the Albert language as a sort of cipher language, since it shares the same syntax and grammar as the language the game is played in, the only difference being that sounds are interchanged with other sounds. The fact that the Albert language is constructed in such a manner, however, doesn't necessarily mean that this is an accurate description of how the language relates to the lore of the game world. It might very well be the case that the Albert language, as it is depicted in the game, would be better conceptualized as an abstraction of the actual language, thereby making the collection of Albert primers an abstraction of language learning, distilling it down to its building blocks as opposed to offering up the full picture. At the very least, we can tell that the Albert themselves don't seem to learn the Albert language as a cipher language, since many of them struggle with the common tongue of Spira. Upon first encountering Riku and other Alberts, she is the only person that talks with Titus, her brother having to resort to body language in order to get his point across. And this isn't just brother's problem, since according to the Ultimania, Riku is in fact the only Albert in the group that is able to understand and speak to Titus. This means that the Albert learn the Albert language as their native tongue, as opposed to a cipher or another language, since brother and the others don't even have mastery over the language the cipher is supposedly based on. However, that doesn't rule out the possibility that the Albert language was originally constructed as a cipher, then later becoming its own independent language that retains the same structural qualities as the base language. The part where this becomes a bit of a problem is where the structure and the vocabulary of both languages go completely unchanged for a thousand years, because that's just not how languages work in the real world. But then again, we have fantasy in the title, so maybe we can let some things slide. Perhaps this could be explained by claiming that the language is routinely updated to be in sync with the common tongue, but seeing as the Albert language already has an independent existence, this might seem just as implausible as the language staying the same for such a long time. So let's just go with them staying the same. But where did it come from? Well, unlike the more fantastic elements of an unchanging language, the theory of the origin of the language that I am about to propose is perhaps a tad more realistic and might even enrich your appreciation of the language itself. As we've already discussed, the Albert have a long history of marginalization and it's not uncommon for such groups to come up with their own secret ways of communicating that exclude or mislead people outside the group. For example, many gay communities have had their own set of phrases and expressions meant to identify fellow members of the community. Even though it's not directly comparable, we can see a similar thing going on with the bilingual markings on Sid's airship, the name Sid being written in regular Spiran script and the phrase Salvage Dream written in the script of the Albert, possibly being a calling card to other Alberts that is meant to go over the heads of those not already in the know. 
So even though the Albert were historically forced to use their language in the aftermath of the Machina War, it might have originated as a way for them to communicate freely with one another without having to worry about the prying ears of their oppressors, thereby be an expression of their freedom even whilst in shackles. As we have seen, the history of the Albert language seems as long as the history of the Alberts themselves, going as far back as to a time before they were even known as the Albert. Their language has been a part of their marginalization or oppression by the ruling parties of Spira, be they the Church of Yevon or a more ancient society with its own sets of gods and beliefs. The origin of the Albert language itself is sadly shrouded in mystery, but as an upside that also gives us more room to play, imagining where it could have come from. By thinking about the Albert language originating as a secret language, deliberately constructed from the common tongue of Spira for the Albert to use among themselves, we can see how the Albert have made the most of their situation, effectively turning their prison into a home. You get it? Because the Albert call their base home? Oh, oh you get it, you're smart. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has given you a new appreciation for the Albert and their language. At least that was my experience while doing research for it. I had to read a novella and the Japanese Ultimania and found out a lot of things I hadn't been aware of, especially from the novella. But even without the novella, I think that my theory about the origin of the Albert language is still somewhat compelling. But please let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I hope to see you again next time.